are going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us today for our official launch of Paykeeper. This is the second webinar we're holding for the Paykeeper process. So let's go ahead and talk about the agenda and, and really what Paykeeper is all about. So today we're going to talk about what is Paykeeper, how does it work, what is the process for the sales rep, how does it work for the customer, then we'll do a quick live demo of showing it in Aurora, and we'll wrap up with a Q&A session. So what is Paykeeper? Paykeeper is a licensed third-party escrow company. So you may be asking, what is escrow? I'm sure if you ever purchased a home before, you've gone through the escrow process. Escrow is a neutral third party that keeps funds secure until agreed upon conditions are met. So that's how Paykeeper will work with Freedom Forever for these cash projects. For the customer, it allows a simple and easy way to fund their projects using ACH or credit cards. For Freedom, it improves the cash collection process and creates an experience that is seamless for everyone. So what are the benefits of Paykeeper? Well, for the customer, again, it simplifies the process. And for the first time, we'll be able to use credit cards for the cash projects. And Paykeeper is FDIC insured. The benefits for Freedom Forever is that it improves the cash collection process, it reduces the burden of collecting funds, and for you, the sales rep, faster payments lead to faster commissions, and Paykeeper provides a better customer experience, so it makes this a more seamless process for our homeowners to complete if a, a project if they're going cash. So here's how Paykeeper works. The sales rep will press the customer for the Paykeeper process. Customer will create account in Paykeeper and then fund the account. Freedom will verify that funding. And then as Freedom completes milestones along the way for that project, Paykeeper will release funds to as those milestones are met throughout the process of this project. So how does it work for sales reps? We're gonna do a live demo of this in a few minutes, but on the financing screen, when you're on the selected financing under cash, there's now an option to build in the cost of Paykeeper. So when you choose Paykeeper from the drop-down menu, it automatically builds in the fee associated with Paykeeper projects and builds it into the cost of that transaction. When the project is submitted for contract with the homeowner, you'll see a notification to review with the homeowner the ESCO process, and there is language added to the contract that reflects that the escrow account must be fully funded prior to installation. So here's how the process works for a process map for Freedom and for Paykeeper. When we submit the project, at the same time, an account is created in Paykeeper. An invitation will be sent to the homeowner, which they'll then use to basically complete the setup of their Paykeeper account. When plans are completed, outreach to the customer will ask for the, the Paykeeper account to be funded. Once the account is funded, it will move to install scheduled. Then it will move to install completed. And once the install is complete, 80% will be dispersed. After inspection is complete, 15% will be dispersed. And then the last 5% of the product is dispersed once the customer approves the project and is satisfied at the end to release the final 5%. So how does that work for the homeowner? Here are some screenshots and examples of the Paykeeper process from the homeowner's perspective. They're going to receive a text message to set up their Paykeeper account. It'll go over what Paykeeper is, what the benefits are, they will create that escrow account. Inside of Paykeeper, it will have the project details, including our information, the project number, and the schedule for funding. Then it will give them the option to fund the account via bank transfer or credit card. And then once they've actually funded the account, they'll get confirmation of the amount that's been funded. 
So when they get to the end of the process, how do they complete their final payment? This goes back to that reference sheet of the process map where at the end of the process, they will receive a text message to say, click to view your escrow account, and they either release the final payment or submit a dispute from there based on how the project installation went. So again, before we go over to that live demo screen, here are the key talking points with Paykeeper. Freedom Forever partners with Paykeeper for cash payments. Paykeeper is a third party escrow company. Escrow is a neutral party that protects project funds by ensuring contractual terms are met. Funds can be deposited with Paykeeper via ACH or credit card with a 3% fee. Deposited funds are FDIC insured up to 250,000. Paykeeper does not disperse funds to freedom until proof of milestone completions per the terms of the contract are provided. And homeowners can withhold funds at the completion of the project if they are not fully satisfied. With all of the appropriate built-ins, so I have a price per watt and a system cost. I'll go ahead and click done. And as you're going through the proposal process, when you get to the select your financing option, under selected financing, you'll choose cash. And on the right hand side, there'll be a drop down where you can now choose Paykeeper. Once you choose Paykeeper, it will build in the appropriate Paykeeper fee into the cost of the project. And now that this process is complete, I can click exit to CRM on the upper right hand side and submit this project back to Lightspeed. So let's go ahead and go back to our presentation now and get ready for the Q&A. All right, about halfway through this presentation, we opened up the Q&A for you to submit questions regarding the Paykeeper process. So we have Brian Malott, Rob Angel, and Jeremy Wise from Paykeeper joining us today on our panel. So we're going to go ahead and answer your Paykeeper-related questions now. All right, folks. Now is your time to uh, send in Paykeeper related questions into our Q&A. We'll get those answered for you. And um, we do appreciate you being here. While I have you, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, we will have this uploaded to our video library and we'll send out a recap with any available resources. Um, so look for an email later this afternoon with a recap of the webinar today and um, we do have our first question coming in. What is the fee for Paykeeper? So what percent is added to the project? The Paykeeper fee is a, go ahead. I was just, I can take this one, Mark. Sure, go ahead. <clears throat> and, and thank you for the presentation. Um, yeah, so the, the fee to use Paykeeper is going to be 1.5% fee. Um, and then if anybody is going to be paying via credit card, um, that will be an additional 3% fee that will be handled through Paykeeper. Um, when you guys are in Aurora and you are um, building the project in the proposal in the Aurora sales mode, um, when, you, when you're on the financing screen and you select, uh, it's a cash customer, and then when you select Paykeeper, what that's going to do is that's going to add the 1.5% fee onto the onto the total amount there so it'll do the math for you um for anybody that was involved with the pilot there was like a little adder that you were selecting that you were toggling on to, to add that adder we have removed that so that is a step that you will no longer need to take um, so the correct way to add it in aurora will be in the financing screen selecting cash and then selecting paykeeper and that will add the 1.5 percent fee um, on there for you Thanks, Brian. We have an additional question. I'm going to shoot this over to Jeremy. Um, so the question is, the credit card fee is 3%. Is there a fee with ACH? Yeah, that's a great question. There is no fee with ACH. It's just with the credit card. And the process is very clear as well. That credit card fee of 3%, that gets charged to the homeowner directly. And as they deposit funds, it outlines exactly what that percentage is and the amount that they're being charged as they put funds into the escrow. Jeremy, would you go ahead and um, we're getting similar questions about that, the 3% credit card fee. Uh -huh. um, will you go ahead and kind of reiterate, this one's from Wendy. Where where does the credit card fee get added? 
Yeah. So that's just at the moment where they add funds into the escrow. So as they're depositing funds for the full project, um, they'll have the option to select ACH at that moment or credit card. Um, as I said earlier, if they select ACH, it's, there's no additional cost. So if they want to deposit a thousand dollars, it's a thousand dollars. Um, but if they choose to deposit a credit card, we're using a credit card, it'll outline at that moment of there is a 3% processing fee to add that and it'll add the additional 3% to that total and have that all outlined for them um, before they click submit. And just to add on to that in terms of the, the freedom process and how that works, the 3% fee is never um, really touched by freedom, so to speak. So in, in that example that Jeremy just gave, um, the customer would pay and just using round numbers, I don't know if these are exact numbers, but if they're doing $1,000, the customer would get charged 1003 um, the contract price would still be a thousand. So Correct. they're going to op, uh, operate slightly differently on the scope of work. You will see the one and a half percent fee on the scope of work. You would not see the 3% fee on the scope of work. Okay. So, um, cause freedom would never, uh, would never see that. So hopefully that clarifies a bit. And Rob, we're getting some questions in the chat about um, with us going with Paykeeper, is the traditional cash option still available where they can mail in a check? Yeah, super important question, super important answer. The answer to that is no. With this change that is going into effect today, uh, all cash customers will now pay through Paykeeper. So no longer are we accepting you know, checks directly to Freedom. Everything must go through Paykeeper. Um, <clears throat> again, I know that is a change, which is why we've been trying to shout this from the rooftops for the past month and a half, make sure everybody understands the implications here. I think the reality is uh, this is just too beneficial of a process for everybody to, to not utilize. So as Mark said in the presentation, uh, it's, it's faster for freedom. It's more it's safer for the customer. Uh, it's easier for the customer to be able to pay. Uh, there's just a ton of benefits and it absolutely is worth the one and a half percent fee for everybody involved. So every cash customer from this point forward uh, will go through Paykeeper. Thanks, Rob. We have a question from Jamie and this is for Jeremy. Can the customer use both credit card and ACH in the same transaction? It's a great question. So those would be two separate transactions, but they could use them both. So if they wanted to do maybe a deposit of $1,000 with a credit card and then the remainder with ACH, that functionality does, does exist for them to be able to do that and separate out those funds. Appreciate that. We have a question about, and I believe this one will be for you, Jeremy, as well. Um, if the customer did not receive their text message from Paykeeper, how can they get that resent to them? Great question. So um, I'm always here for support. So Paykeeper support can always help resend that if we need to as well. Um, all these projects are being managed internally by the Freedom Ops team. So they have full ability to resend invites as well. So communicating with them, I believe, would be a process. Um, Rob, on your side, does that seem like a sufficient path or is there a better preferred path that you'd have in mind? Um, yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, uh, we, we haven't seen that happen yet. Um, if you really need to, you can utilize freedoms, you know, typical support channels. So, you know, chat or, or open up a ticket, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, we, of course, as, as, as Mark mentioned, when it comes time to fund the account would reach out to the homeowner directly and let them know about that. And so, of course, at that point, if there's any issues where they didn't receive it, we could we could handle them at that point. But if you guys want to get ahead of it and upon project creation, they haven't gotten anything. Yeah, you can either reach out to Paykeeper or uh, reach out to Freedom's normal support channels. Thanks. Next question we have is for Rob. What does the process look like if a homeowner decides to cancel their project halfway through? Will the homeowner be penalized for canceling early? <clears throat> so this would operate the same way as, as a normal cash deal. Um, <clears throat> so in this particular case, we either, you know, we would just cancel the project in Paykeeper um, and, you know, deduct any cancellation fees, if any. Um, that process has changed a little bit over the past few months. 
Um, <clears throat> I think in some instances, depending on where the project is, we we may retain the thousand dollar deposit. I, I I honestly don't know the exact criteria that we're using today to, to determine that, but I think the point would be whether it's cash or paykeeper. Um, that that policy is kind of separate from the method, so there's not necessarily a change due to paykeeper or, or us using paykeeper. But we cancel the project. Anything they've already deposited at that point, um, less potentially any uh, deposit would get refunded to to the homeowner. Thanks, Rob. Our next question is from Nicole, and this kind of piggybacks on some of what we covered during the presentation. Is there an account where customers can see their cash in escrow or any kind of paykeeper portal? Jeremy, do you want to talk about like how, what the process is like after they, you know, click the link and set their account up? Yeah, absolutely. So as they set up their account and they go to fund the escrow, they now have access to that paykeeper project where they can see um, when their funds clear and they're in there. If there's any remaining funds that need to be deposited, they'll have a portal where they can view their specific pro project and statuses along the way. So it's part of that same process as setting up their account. Thank you so much. We do have some time for some additional questions. So um, go ahead and submit those questions while we still have time. If there are any questions that do not um, get answered in the process or you, or you want to address us like offline, you can always email us at producteducation at freedomforever.com. And we will answer those questions. So let's grab a couple more here. From Robert. Can we add Paykeeper to existing projects in the pipeline? How do we do that? Rob, you want to take that one? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we can, we prefer, uh, we prefer not to, um, there would be a little bit of involvement from, uh, some other teams here p potentially, but yeah, I think if, if you really want to do that, uh, for whatever the reason may be, um, I would say open up a ticket, um, our team will look at it and kind of distribute it to the appropriate folks and, um, create, you know, get, get a paykeeper account created. I think the one, the one thing I'm hesitating a bit that I need to confirm um, is whether or not the customer would need to sign. We, up until now, we've had a, uh, a special addendum for Baykeeper jobs where the customer is kind of agreeing to use the escrow. Um, we've, from this point forward, included that language in our normal installation agreement, so there's not a separate addendum. So I just need to confirm whether we need to have customers sign that addendum uh, that, that signed an agreement prior to, to today or not. But anyway, uh, yeah, if you want to do it, submit a ticket. We'll, we'll get those answers probably today, and we'll... Uh, make sure that our team is clear on the process to add them uh, if and when that case arises. 